Welcome back to Switched to Linux. This is a brief overview of the GIMP program, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. This would be a free and open source uh, look like to Photoshop. Uh, as uh, and I really like GIMP. Uh, there's, uh, uh, to be honest, if I could purchase Photoshop for Linux, I would purchase Photoshop over GIMP just because it. It does work quite a bit smoother, and uh, I, I kind of like the um, uh, just some of the implementations. And there's some things that Photoshop currently still does, particularly in layer styles that are very frequently used that are still not implemented into GIMP for some reason. Um, and I'll show you what, what some of those are. But overall, I do like GIMP. Um, there are a, a few little kind of buggy, annoying things about it. Uh, the first is the default view is outside of the single window and so you get this where you get stuff floating all over the place and it's really annoying. Um, so you can go up into the windows and hit the single window mode. Now on Linux Mint, and I'm not sure if this is the case everywhere, on my Ubuntu computer it does not do this, but on Linux Mint you'll notice up here in the upper right that there is no maximize. And if you look down here, you can see that the, uh, the program actually goes well below the, the menu bar there and you can't drop it down. So what I do if I'm gonna be inside of GIMP doing, doing a, a fair amount of image editing is I actually come into the edit menu and I go down to preferences and under theme, if you just change the theme here, you'll see that it will, and it doesn't matter if you pick the default or you pick the small, simply changing the theme, I'm just gonna use the default, Simply changing the theme now gives us the maximize button. So now I can make sure that, that everything is on the screen. And that's really important because as you zoom in or out, it'll put the images in the center. And if it's, if you have things going below the taskbar there, it gives you a, a difficult uh, time getting there. So we're going to open up an image here. And I have a image right on my desktop of the Grand Canyon. So I'm going to open this image up. So some of the things that are very much like Photoshop, at least the way I have this set up over here uh, on the right, I have layers set up. I can set my opacity. I have uh, my tool brush, my, my tool uh, options there, my color selectors over here. Uh, I believe this is like a path or a, or a mask there. And this is current open image window. Down here at the bottom, I can select uh, my wh whether my ruler is in pixels. I can do inches, uh, milliliters, points. You know, so I have all these different options inside of my system. And then next to it over here, I can see the uh, the view of the uh, image here. For some reason, this is quite a bit smaller than it usually is for me. Um, uh, it's part, probably just part of the fact that yeah, GIMP, GIMP is, is slightly buggy still. Um, I found that I can do most things that I need to do on GIMP. Uh, in fact, uh, not only do I use GIMP on Linux, I also use it if I need to do image editing on my Mac. So uh, I do have GIMP uh, across uh, multiple different platforms. Uh, some of the other things that's very nice about GIMP is how easy it is to adjust your... Uh, to adjust your um, uh, toolbars. So one of the things that I that I uh, I'm very accustomed. I've been using Photoshop since uh, 2010, I think, on a regular basis as a web designer, and so I'm really used to the keyboard shortcuts, and there's tons of them. Now, what I have noticed looking through all these menus and items is that there are very few toolbar. Uh, keyboard shortcuts enabled by default. And I think part of the reason is that it allows you to map the things that you want the most to various reasons. I've never read that or anything. That's just kind of what I surmise. So if you go under edit and under keyboard shortcuts, this is a great place uh, for you to come in here and, uh, and just go ahead and, and make these adjustments. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, well, let me show you what I'm gonna do first. Um, under the image, 
and scale image. This is a feature that I use in Photoshop repeatedly. So canvas size and scale image are two of my most used systems and there is no default. Actually, there was no default for canvas size either. I added this keyboard shortcut and the nice thing is once you add the keyboard shortcut, it will appear in the menu. So this will pull up the scale image option here. So we're gonna come over here to edit and down to uh, keyboard shortcuts and we are going to find image and find that item which is the scale image and over here you can click on this and it'll toggle between disabled and uh, new probably new accelerator input or something I what I guess that says but once this says new accelerator we're gonna hit the keyboard shortcut that we want so here I'm gonna do control alt I which is what the same uh, keyboard shortcut for this is in Photoshop I try and make sure that that the keyboard shortcuts are similar so I'm not you know remembering keyboard shortcuts for different two different programs so now I close that now I can hit my control alt and I and get my scale image and you'll also see in the menu that when we add the keyboard shortcut it will actually add it over here so if you do forget what the keyboard shortcut is you can do uh, you can just pull it down the menu and you can see it so that's a very nice feature I, I believe and, and I know you can easily uh, make those keyboard shortcuts in um, uh, in uh, Photoshop as well and uh, I recall them being slightly more difficult than to do than that but overall um, uh, overall the the system works out much the same uh, you can do the same selection systems um, uh, that uh, uh, that you can in Photoshop so I can come down here I can crop the selection if I want um, I want to undo that though and I want to completely do that um, over here, you can just, uh, you know, the vast majority of the options for colorations uh, are available here as well. So you can flip horizontally, uh, flip vertically, rotate clockwise. All of these items are, uh, all of these items are, are pretty much exactly the same as Photoshop. So here under the colors, these are the uh, kind of like the, uh, the layers that you can do. For colorizing so you'll see just like in Photoshop it'll only colorize what we have selected so if I come over here and deselect and now that's not deselect I forget what deselect is and get by default we're just gonna come up to select hit none oh I hit the duplicate okay uh, come back up to colors so here we can do the same thing to to this and of course our preview is on so I can get a brief on you know look at what this thing looks like or I can go ahead and cancel it and go back um, so uh, this is the uh, duplicate I accidentally made I'm just going to discard any changes to that all right now of the things that uh, that I wish were a little bit easier one of those is as I had mentioned the uh, the layer styles so in Photoshop if you come over to your layer options and you double click uh, to the right of the name it'll pull up the layer styles option which will allow you to take whatever's on that current layer and it will allow you to to do things like drop a shadow or do a um, uh, do a, uh, a stroke or you know embed and boss just several other other options now there is actually a plug-in pack that you can put into GIMP that, that does those options. So the the functionality does exist. If that's something that, that uh, you definitely have to have, do an online search. You can find the, the tools and how to implement that. I, I just kind of wish that that was, that was one of those things that really keeps me from using GIMP more frequently than I do. You know, This is my main production computer when I'm outside the office. So if I'm traveling, this is the computer I do things on. And you know, I've done a lot with with GIMP, so it's not like uh, it's not like I, I dislike it or it's not like I think it's horrible. It, it really is a good program, especially for being free and open source. It is an excellent program. There's just a few of those functions that I wish that it uh, that it still did, did have. Um, let's see if there's other options. Um, so over here is you can hunt through all the menus. All the filter options are the same here as they are in. Um, uh, as they are in uh, in Photoshop, so you can have a look and uh, and play around with all these. The great thing about it, you know, it's free, it's open source to use, 
so you can download it even on the same computer you might have Photoshop on and play with it especially if you're getting ready to switch over to Linux you might want to get used to uh, how the system works you might want to customize your GIMP to work like Photoshop or your Photoshop to work like GIMP uh, I, I think really they they kept the, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts out there so that you could make the adjustments on on your own um, and other than that uh, pretty much anything that you want to do with um, uh, with uh, Photoshop you can do so exporting as I did change this keyboard shortcut here as well to basically like the the export web uh, format so here's all the different file types you can export as so in this case here I might do something like a, a JPEG um, and then the export, this is one of those things that, that several Linux programs have, have this feature as, as, the, as the export as instead of save as. So if you go ahead and just hit the save as button up here, the only option that you really have are, are the few GIMP items. Uh, you can do the gzip archive, bzip archive, the, and the GIMP formats are the only options under save. If you're not used to that because you're used to using Photoshop, remember you need to go down to export as. And the export as is what actually gives you the ability to go into all the different image types. So here you can go into pretty much any image type that's out there, including several of them that uh, I've um, never used. So here is actually in, uh, built into it is the ISO format, ICO for the icons. Uh, this is what used to be required for favicons, probably still is required for favicons unless you're using something like WordPress. Uh, so this is something you used to have to install into Photoshop. So it's not like Photoshop is perfect as well. But anyway, um, this is just a very brief overview of what uh, GIMP does. And uh, again, it is a essentially like an open source version of... Uh, of um, Photoshop uh, there it is lacking a little bit of the smoothness and a little bit of the functionality but uh, if if you don't have the the costs or or the funding or uh, the ability to pay the the newer subscription model that Adobe is doing now then uh, this is uh, this is a good replacement for most of it and the great news is whatever you can't figure out how to do in GIMP that you could do in Photoshop there is most likely a tutorial uh, somewhere online about how to do that. And since I'm not a, a super expert in GIMP, I don't take the time to do those tutorials. But you can just do a little uh, Google search, probably a YouTube search to get those instructions. So this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.